Yakov Jugashvili, the eldest son of Joseph Stalin, by and large became a hostage of the will of his imperious father, who wanted his offspring to be not a civilian officer, but a military servant. The fate of Yakov Jugashvili, unfortunately today, has become a source of the most amazing revelations and discoveries that dishonest pseudo-historians and writers of all kinds do not hesitate to compose. But in the case of Yakov's fate, fortunately the veil of secrecy was still ajar, and today some points can either be confirmed or refuted. Yakov Jugashvili was taken prisoner on July 16, 1941, at Vitebsk. At that moment, three armies, 16, 19, and 20, were surrounded, so when trying to get out of the ring, the officers did not immediately notice the loss of the commander of the 6th Battery of the 14th Howitzer Regiment of the 14th Tank Division. And when the opportunity arose to take a small break, an instruction came from the headquarters. Zhukov, order it to immediately find out and report to the front headquarters where the battery commander of the 14th Howitzer Regiment 14th Tank Division, Senior Lieutenant Jogashvili Yakov Iosevich is located. An organized search for the commander immediately yielded no results. It was possible only to find the Red Army soldier Luporidze, with whom Jogashvili left the encirclement. According to Luporidze, as early as July 15th, they together with Yakov obtained peasant clothing, buried their documents and began to get back to their troops. Then Jugashvili decided to take a break, while his Red Army comrade decided to move on. This initially gave a timid hope that the commander also managed to get out of the encirclement. However, soon on July 20th, German newspapers stunned everyone with the headlines that Stalin's eldest son was in German captivity. The interrogation of the most valuable prisoner of war was conducted by Mayor Galters and Captain Ruschley, who was quite friendly did not exert any pressure, and sometimes even sympathized with Yakov. In total, the German officers asked Jogashvili about 150 questions. But the main thing was to get confirmation that the son of Stalin was indeed captured. Even a paper signed by Jogashvili has been preserved. I am the undersigned Yakov Iosevich Jogashvili on July 16, 1941, near Leonzo, fell into German captivity and destroy my documents before being captured. My father, Joseph Jogashvili, also bears the surname Stalin. I hereby declare that the above information is true. During the interrogation, Yakov Jogashvili said a phrase that perhaps later determined his fate. I am ashamed. I am ashamed in front of my father that I survived. In fact, Stalin's open archives show that until 1943 Stalin doubted that his son had not surrendered voluntarily. Perhaps that is why Yakov's wife, Yulia, was arrested and imprisoned until 1943, when Stalin finally became convinced that his son was not captured of his own free will. By the way, the famous phrase, I don't change a soldier for a field marshal, attributed to Stalin, is in fact an artistic invention. Stalin himself, one said the following about the exchange proposal in the presence of his daughter, Svetlana Aleluyeva. The Germans offer it to exchange Yasha for one of their own. I will not bargain with them. No, in war as in war. Finally, it turned out that a note written by Yakov himself was kept in Stalin's personal archive. 19th of July, 1941. Dear Father, I am in captivity. Healthy. Soon I will be sent to one of the officer camp in Germany. The treatment is good. I wish you health. I all, Yasha. This is the last news received from Yakov. And again, about fate. During the interrogation, Jogashvili did not know that the Germans had hidden the microphone. So, later having done the titanic work of cutting out individual phrases and words, the Nazi created a film on which Yakov Jogashvili vehemently denounced the Stalinist regime. This edited tape may have become one of the Wehrmacht's most powerful propaganda pieces. It was even played on the front line, and it was heard by thousands of Soviet soldiers and commanders. Perhaps, thanks to this record, many Soviets decided to surrender. Later, 
Yakov was handed over to the Gestapo, which according to unconfirmed reports, was also involved in the torture of Jergishvili. This indirectly confirms the information that being in the hands of the Gestapo, Yakov twice tried to open his veins. After the end of the interrogation and investigations, Jergishvili was transferred to a prisoner of war camp in Hamelsburg. According to the recollections of surviving Soviet prisoners of war, Yakov, who arrived, looked very bad. It seemed that he had either suffered a long illness or torture. There were no concessions in the condition for Stalin's son. He received the same amount of food as everyone else. And in 1942, Jergishvili was unexpectedly transferred from the camp to the Gestapo and then there to the Sachsenhausen concentration camp. The transfer was carried out on the personal orders of Himmler. After a short stay in the camp prison, Yakov was sent to a special fenced barrack to the Sounder Camp A. Here were the most important prisoners, such as, for example, Molotov's nephew. Later, it turned out that he was an imposter. Thomas Kachin, Churchill's nephew, the son of French Prime Minister Captain Blum, and others. At the moment, the Germans understood that the threat of the Allies opening a second front was real, so even in the camp, they tried to make the Russians and the British to quarrel. By the way, according to the recollections of eyewitnesses, Jogashvili himself claimed that he was ready to commit suicide if only to prevent a break in relations between the USSR and England due to artificially created oppression of British prisoners. In April 1943, many drew attention to the fact that Yakov Jogashvili had lost interest in everything. He forgot to shave, sometimes he didn't eat. Then the reason was found. It turned out that the Berlin radio broadcasted an interview with Stalin, in which he gave an answer about his captive son. I don't have any son, Yakov. Churchill's nephew recalled that after this program, on April 14, 1943, Jergishvili became absolutely lost and lost interest in life. The chronology of Jergishvili's death itself was studied in sufficient detail after the war. There was two versions. He threw himself on a wire fence. The second, Yakov was shot while trying to escape. But as it turned out, both versions are true and false at the same time. Escape in a specially protected area is pointless. And the fact that Jogashvili decided to commit suicide was confirmed not only by the prisoners, but also by the camp guards. The last minutes of Stalin's son's life were like this. When all the prisoners were sent to the barracks in the evening, only Yakov remained on the territory. Conrad Harfig, the sentry who allegedly shot Jogashvili, testified during the investigation. All the prisoners except the Yakov Jogashvili were already in the barracks, only he alone continued to lie near the barracks and hid the ground with a branch of a tree. I demanded that he get up and enter the barracks, to which he replied, No, do what you want to do with me, but I will not go to the barracks. I went to speak to the commandant. And while the head of the guards was going to call the commandant, Yakov Jogashvili suddenly rushed to the wire fence, shouted to the sentry to shoot. The most interesting thing that the sentry began to persuade Jogashvili to return to the barracks. But he answered in rage that the German sentries did not know the service. The Russian sentry would have fired a long time ago. And only when Jogashvili grabbed the wire with his hands, the fatal shot was fired into his head, which put an end to Jogashvili's life. An autopsy found that Yakov Jogashvili died from electric shock and the bullet hit the head of an already dead man. Therefore, the Germans were initially sure that it was suicide. The same was confirmed after the war by the head of the guard who wrote. It was not an attempt to escape, but an act of desperation of a man ready for anything. Yakov's body was cremated, and ash was sent to Berlin. Then these traces were lost. Interrogated by the Soviet side after the war, the camp staff insisted on the same version, suicide, and the bullet had already hit a dead body. However, MGB investigators, under the leadership of General Serov, decided that the Nazis simply wanted to relieve themselves of responsibility for the execution of the prisoner. Therefore, the version became official, he was killed while trying to escape. 